Hey guys, it's Austin here with Out Jeeping. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys this audio air compressor. Now a lot of you guys are thinking, oh it's going to be another boring review video, but these products, I actually got a discount code for you guys that's down in the description below, so you can check that out and get you some money off on these products. Now I have found these products to be very useful, more than I actually thought, especially that uh, truck bed cover video that I did. Um, I used that for a variety of things. So we're going to take a look at this air compressor and compare it to the one they sent me about last year, which is the handheld one. This one seems to be bigger, so let's get started. All right, so looking at this air compressor right off the bat, as you can see, it's a small unit. Um, has a couple other features with the light and stuff. Uh, but this is the type of one that plugs right into your cigarette lighter in almost every car. So it's good for emergency situations. So it's always good to you know have in your car in case you do run a flat and you don't want to change a tire. So I'm just going to pull this open and we'll take a look at what's all inside. So I did open this earlier, but we do have a nice bag that this comes with. So you can just throw that in your back seat or wherever and it'll stay all nice in that bag. Here for the actual air compressor, off the bottom we have a, uh, our power outlet that goes into the cigarette lighter. And then we also have our hose that's stuffed nicely down here. And this goes on to any uh, Schrader valve. Um, for a majority of tires. It also does come with a little instructions and we have some adapters if you want to fill up um, any inflatables or um, any you know balls, basketballs or anything like that. It does come with a little fuse so if we blow a fuse we can uh, replace that also. Now on the side of the air compressor we have some information on what this uh, all provides. It's a 120 watt and it runs off a 12 volt DC. It doesn't say how much CFM um, it could pump, but this can pump up to 150 PSI. So if you have uh, truck tires that you know need like 90 PSI, this should probably do. But today we're gonna be doing it on my Jeep tires that are 33 inch, and I'm only gonna be filling them up to 30 PSI, and then we're gonna test it on just a normal car. I got a Mazda 3 over here, so that goes to 35 or 40 PSI, so we'll see how long it takes to fill that up. So I'm gonna go and plug this in, and then we'll take a look at the features. All right, so I have this plugged into my Jeep right now. I also mentioned that this has about 10 feet of cord, so it's perfect for uh, going around all the tires in your vehicle if you only have one outlet up front by the dash, which is what I do. If you have a uh, bigger truck and you don't have a power outlet in the rear, this might become an issue, but for most vehicles, this might be the ideal setup. So I have this on right now, and as you can see, we have our different units. Um, so if you keep pressing this, it goes to PSI to bar, to KPA, to, to KGF uh, centimeter squared. Since this is the United States, we all use PSI, so that's what I'm going to go with. So to set our PSI, we just use the plus and minus, and this does it in uh, half PSI increments. So for my Jeep, I'm going to go to 30 PSI, and then you set it right there. Now once we have our nozzle connected up to the tire, all we have to do is press power, and we should be able to see this rise. So on the side here, we have a light just with this power. Um, you just click it, it goes to red. And I think, yeah, that flash is red. Um, you can turn it off, but it's always nice to have a little light on this um, if you're in an emergency situation because not everyone has flashlights. Um, so that's always good to have. So I'm gonna take this over to my Jeep, um, release all the air out of it, and we'll see how long it takes to fill it up. All right, so I'm gonna pull out this Schrader valve and release all the air that's in the tire, and we'll start from when it's at zero. Alright, so that's about flat and this leaves you stranded on the highway. This is normally what you're going to have or if you have a slow leak, it's even better because it's going to fill up faster. But if you have to plug it up, usually you want to let out all the air. So hopefully this will be more ideal for those real life situations. Alright, so now with this uh, air hose, it's about a couple feet long, which is nice um, in case you're 
valve were to be up here, you can always reach up there. So I'm just gonna thread this onto here and we'll see how long it's gonna take it up. I got a stopwatch ready. All right, so I have the PSI set. Now I'm just gonna press power. I'm actually surprised this is actually relatively quiet to the one I reviewed last year, which is just a hand pump. Barely any noise is coming from this at all. All right, so I just stopped it at eight minutes here and we're about 16 PSI in the tire. Now the instructions say to only have this go at eight minutes of runtime and to have a few minutes in between each use to let it cool off. So I don't want to overheat this. I just want to use it um, how the instructions intended for it. So I'm going to wait a few minutes and then we'll continue pumping up this tire. All right, so it's been a few minutes, um, so I'm gonna start this up right away. Another piece of information I'd like to provide is it actually does have a working airflow of 35 liters per minute, which um, is equivalent to 1.23 CFM. All right, so I stopped right there. Um, it got up to 30 PSI at about 17 minutes, which is kind of a lot, but you gotta think this is a pretty big tire. Um, it's a 33 inch tire on a 15 inch rim, um, and it's going from completely flat to full. Um, I know that other air compressor I reviewed, the handheld one took about 22 minutes to fill this thing up, so this is a little bit more efficient. All right, so now I'm gonna take this nozzle off and I'm actually gonna check the PSI and see how accurate it is compared to an analog gauge I have right here. It's actually pretty close, maybe just a hairline crack underneath um, 30 PSI, but that's what it measured out to. And yeah, it actually did pretty well. All right, so I'm gonna repeat the process on a normal car size tire. I have a Mazda 3 over there, so I'm gonna let the air out and we'll try and fill it up again. All right, so the tire we have here is a 205 by 60 on 16 inch rims. So I'm gonna let all the air out and then we'll try and fill it up. All right, so I got 32 PSI set in this air compressor and I'm just gonna thread it on here. All right, and starting. All right, so that was right at seven minutes and 52 seconds and it says 36.5 PSI. They usually go half PSI over because um, as you're pumping, it's not always accurate on uh, how much is in the tire. So I'm gonna pull this off and we'll take a look on what it is with my gauge. So right now it's actually only reading 34 PSI on my gauge. Um, so it might not be too accurate as it gets up to the higher um, numbers, but for the time it was able to fill up this tire for just a little portable air compressor, that's pretty impressive. Also, I do have a little temperature gun so I can actually read on how hot this is. And on the side here, it's actually reading upper 80s to 90 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Up here, it's about 96. So it does get a little bit warm, but that was right almost at eight minutes on the uh, amount you can do for runtime before it has to cool off. But other than that, it's nothing too hot where it's gonna melt plastic or anything. Um, nothing over 100 degrees. Um, also, like I said, it's about 44 degrees here in the shop. So it is a little bit cooler. Um, maybe you might get some higher temperatures when it's a little bit warmer outside. All right, so another thing I'm gonna add real quick is basically just how small of a package this is and you can basically fit it anywhere you want so I'm going to keep this one in my truck and I can just fit it right underneath the rear seat if it's nicely down in there and you know I have it just in case I need it now another product that Audio had that it also did a re video review on was this truck bed cover and I wasn't really too fond of it at first but I've actually used this in multiple different cases and not just for like uh, using it for your truck bed but I've actually used it to cover up things like a snowmobile. Um, my friend used it for his truck because it's leaking water in. So it actually came in more uses than I thought. And it comes with bungee cords and anything. So I'm not going to aid or anything to say that. But that actually came in uh, use more than I thought.
All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. Make sure to check out the description below where I have a coupon code where you can get this for a pretty good deal. Otherwise, retail needs to sell for about 40 bucks, which really isn't bad for uh, cheap insurance on the side of the road. The only downfall I would have against this is that it takes you know a while to fill up a tire, but it hasn't failed on me and it does you know what it says it'll do. Um, you'll, and another thing is that once you get to higher PSI, it's not always accurate, so make sure to always have uh, gauge with you that way you can check but usually when you're on the side of the road you're not looking necessarily for accuracy you're just looking for something that gets your tire um, inflated so you're on your way so if you have any more comments or questions make sure to post them below and if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe to the LGBT YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in the next video